Hi Abby, thanks for watching my video. Okay, this is how to tank Blood Furnace on a leveling protection warrior. As you can see right there, I'm using my useless buff on the healer. Uh, that's a talent point I wish I hadn't taken, but I don't feel like respecting, so it just gets to stay. Um, right here, I'm just going to AoE tank most of this stuff. At the start of the run, normally I just like to test out the healer, see how many mobs they can take, because um, this is the first time running with this healer, who actually turns out to be a pretty good healer. Um, trash mobs in this place aren't really any difficult. There are some casters, but as long as you can get them in thunderclap range, you're pretty good. Now this run, in this video that I'm actually showing, I'm going to show the full run at full speed and just to see how that works, see how everyone likes just seeing the full run at normal speed. It's going to be a little bit longer of a video. I'm not sure how that's going to work in the future. But for this video, I thought I'd just do the entire run. Now right here, I see that my healer is running up the stairs. So I just decide I'm just going to leave the DPS to take them down to come up here and to catch the stealth mobs that are going to attack the healer. Now, this guy, he keeps running up the stairs and this lets me know that, yeah, this guy's going to be a pretty good healer because he wants to move fast. He keeps pushing it up the stairs so that we can go faster and pull mobs faster. Now, at the top of the stairs right there, I just ran up to the top and then uh, used a demo shout to try to pull everyone out of stealth. I'm not sure if it works or not, but I just wanted to aggro them to me before they aggro to the healer. That I thought was going to pull everyone in the room, but turns out it only pulls the one guy. So I had to line aside him because he was a caster. Um, thunderclap to get aggro on him, and then just tank him like a normal mob once he gets into melee range. Right here I thought I was going to be able to get one group, but I mean that never works out so just always be ready to pick up ads and right there our shaman is actually chain lightning people did not even see that so I decided just to get every mob in the room and just tank them all at once instead of trying to fight them in groups now I did have a death knight in this group he did actually death grip mobs off me a couple of times in the instance, but it wasn't a big deal because with his death and decay on the ground, uh, most of the time whenever adds would spawn, they would run to him instead of running straight to the healer, which makes them easier to pick up. Right there, he just death gripped that mob off me, so I decided to just let him have it, and if he wants to pull one off me, he can tank it. That's fine. He's wearing plate. And as long as it's not aggroing to the healer, it's fine with me if he wants to tank one. This room right here, this is a little bit of a pain because of just the amount of ads that you're going to get in this room. Um, right here, the healer runs up here, and I thought he was going to try to pull some more because he has been pulling some mobs. So I just went ahead and charged the rest of the room. Go ahead and get everything. Try to tank it all at once. This, uh, this healer is doing really well, so tanking all of the room at once is no big deal for him. He can keep me alive through it, so why not try to speed up the run a little bit. This next room has a lot of these uh, technicians. The one thing I can say about the technicians is if you have a lot of melee in your group, you're going to want to try to only pull one or two technicians at a time because they're going to put the mines on the ground. And when they do, those mines are going to blow up. And it's a big AoE damage that's going to hit a lot of the melee in your group. It's going to do a lot of damage to everyone in the group. This group had a feral druid, a mage, and a DK for... Uh, the DPS so we did have three people standing in melee range of those mines and that's a lot of damage that the healer is going to have to heal through if you get more than one or two at a time so 
just take that in mind of if you're the only melee then it shouldn't matter all the hills are gonna be on you anyway but if you have a group of all melee DPS then you may want to just take it easy on pulling more than one group of the technicians and there was another death grip off of me which um, yeah it's kind of a pain but I've basically just started if they want to death grip something away from me they can have them this is the first boss and he's really no big deal he does an AOE spray so turn him away from the group but he drops so fast with some decent DPS that he's nothing to worry about and there are some plate gloves that drop off of him and I actually picked those up for an upgrade because they will be better than what I'm using after I put some gems in them I'm not sure if I'm gonna put gems in them or not but I go ahead and put them on and this up here is there are some stealth mobs down through here there's one right there that just aggro to the back of the group as you can see the death and decay pulled him to the death knight where my thunderclap and cleave was easily he was easily to pick up um, that's the one good thing about having a paladin or a um, a paladin or a DK in your group is they lay down some AOE on the ground and it moves them right to you whereas if you have casters channeling their AOE on top of you if a new mob aggros to your group and gets hit by their AOE first then it's more than likely going to run toward the caster and you're going to have to move whereas with these guys it just aggros to the guys who are standing right next to you these warlocks down through here they keep summoning pets I don't know if that's all they do I think they may cast a shadow bolt too but you just got to continually spam some kind of AOE attack that way you pick up the pets that they spawn those succubus pets can CC the healer if they live long enough so make sure as soon as you see a succubus pet that someone in the group is trying to DPS them down as fast as they can all the way through this hallway is basically just chain pulling pull everything as fast as you can go there's nothing really in here other than those uh, the succubus that the warlocks spawn that should be any danger to the group as long as you're taking everything you should be pretty much under control unless your healer was to get cc'd by one of the succubus now at the end of this room sometimes there's a stealth mob sometimes there's not you're gonna see me run down here looking for it <coughs> I'm not really sure I don't think there's one in this group but sometimes there'll be one right here at the end of this hallway so I like to always just run down here and check and see so that way it doesn't aggro up from behind you and get on to the healer without you seeing it this is another room a lot like the one before it where you're gonna have a lot of these technicians and a lot of these casters so if there's a big group of technicians and you have a few melee in your group again just uh try to pull them away from the mines that they're gonna lay and if you can uh, just try to pull as few technicians at a time so that it's easier on your healers I think this room actually has one thing that is three technicians and that's it yes there's that group over to the side that's why I didn't pull these two groups together was because of the three technicians standing in that group right there it's not that you couldn't tank all of them because with the healer that we have in this run he's a really good healer and we could probably have done it easily but just to make his life a little bit easier it's better to take the group of the technicians by their cell well, this next boss is kind of like a little event boss we've seen them in all the other uh, old school dungeons the event bosses, at least this one, instead of being on a timer, is as soon as one pack dies, the next pack will uh, spawn. <clears throat> and what you're going to do is you're going to have to clear this entire room, no matter what. When you do, you hit the lever in the middle. As we take out this last group of trash, then I'm going to hit the lever in the middle, and the mobs are going to spawn from the rooms on the sides. Right here, click the lever and they start running out just thunderclap on them now one thing you can't do is start heading for the next uh, you can head to the next room that you know is going to spawn they start spawning 
on the right hand side if you're looking back toward the way you came in and then it'll be the one closest to you on the right the one closest to you on the left then the back on the right and then the back on the left so if you want to start running and get uh, almost to the door before they spawn that's always a good idea because then they'll aggro to you instead of running to the closest person to them these mobs don't really do anything they're just melee mobs they may berserk um, but there's nothing really to worry about just tank them like you would any other pack of melee mobs and once you get this last group to spawn the groups continually get bigger I think it's three and then the last two rooms are four after this the main gate at the room up there in front of the lever is gonna spawn the boss he does an AOE poison attack underneath him, so make sure you don't stand in it. But really, with the DPS level of Burning Crusade gear versus the mob's health in the Burning Crusade gear, he should die before he gets to do anything. And right there, I ran into the lever, and yeah, just an epic fail on my part right there. Now right here, this is the boss, and as you can see, his health is just dropping and he's dead. After he dies, don't stand underneath him because if you stand underneath him he's going to just spawn that poison right underneath him and you can take damage from it. Um, This next room, I like to go to the left just because to the left there's more trash but you can actually see all of it whereas if you go to the right you're only going to have to fight one or two uh, trash mobs but they're always going to be the stealth mobs and I just like to go this way to get the extra XP because that's why you run in the dungeons is for the XP I've never quite understood why people who go into dungeons just try to run them as fast as they can at lower levels because really you're just there for the XP so why not kill everything while you're there right here our shaman runs up and actually pulls these other two so I take that as a sign of maybe the run's not going fast enough for him, so we should speed it up. So I'm going to start just chain pulling again. And see if we can't get this run going a little bit faster. The one thing about this uh, dungeon is that it's very hard to chain pull here because the mobs are really spread out. It's not like the uh, vanilla WoW dungeons where mobs are really close together almost all the time. Um, they do spread them out a lot more in this dungeon, so it's kind of hard to tank everything and just chain pull. That pull right there, because the imps are caster mobs, is a little bit difficult to aggro all of them. What I like to do is just run to the right, thunderclap, and go back to the left and try to pick up the other ones with a demo shout. And as long as you have most of them on you, you should be able to take them down. These mobs are kind of a pain because they do do a charge and randomly charge anyone in the group no matter who they have aggro on. Um, if that couple of them, if you try to tank them as all um, one big group, if you try to tank this room all up by itself, um, you're going to run into a problem where these guys could chain stun your healer and you could actually die because they're just chain stunning your healer. Right here. I do believe our healer is going to be able to handle it, so I just go ahead and aggro everything in the room. They can be a little bit difficult to tank because of the random charge. Um, just go ahead and pick up this caster. And as you can see, they can be rooted, but they do charge out of roots, so if you have a mage or someone, you can try to frost nova and hold them all close to you. But it's not a big deal, you shouldn't be able to worry too much about anything other than them just randomly stunning your healer and as long as your healer is competent you should be fine this is the last boss what you're going to want to do is just run up here and hit one of these guys that's going to aggro all the ones that are channeling to him um, after these guys drop the main one in the middle is going to come at you he's the boss um, basically what he's going to do is halfway through the fight he'll stop and he'll channel a spell you want to run back because that's going to be big damage um, he doesn't actually get to do this in this run because our DPS just puts him down way too fast and 
But if he does start channeling something in your runs, just step back, run away from him, and then charge back in after it's done. And that's about it.